Okay, let's go and talk about the FTCE, and that is an acronym that stands for Florida Teacher Certification Examinations. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the FTCE Middle Grades Math 5 through 9 exam. And because you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to take this exam, and that is outstanding, as it indicates to me that you are a teacher in Florida or you are uh, becoming a teacher in Florida, and we need as many great teachers as we possibly can, as teaching is so important to uh, all of our futures. So congratulations on being a teacher or becoming a teacher. However, you definitely need to be able to pass all your respective certification exams and obviously, if you're going to be taking the FTCE middle grades math five through nine exam, you need to know a good amount of mathematics. And what I have for you here is a practice prom that you should be able to handle uh, pretty easily if you are fully prepared for this exam. So here's a problem. I'm going to get to this problem here in just one second. I'm going to show you the solution. Uh, before I do that, though, I want to give you a full opportunity to solve this all on your own. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades, and I definitely know what it's like to take uh, math certification exams, right? I've been teaching from sixth grade through 12th grade. I didn't take the FTCE. I personally took the Praxis, uh, Praxis exams, but all teacher certification exams, irrespective of what subject, are going to be uh, challenging. You're talking about professional examinations and uh, the FTCE middle grades math five through nine exam uh, has a lot more than just like basic middle grades uh, mathematics on it. You're going to have to know quite a bit of advanced uh, high school um, level uh, advanced math. Okay, Certainly far more than just basic algebra and geometry. Uh, so anyways, Hopefully you are fully ready because you don't want to go into this exam and not pass it the first time, all right? Uh, uh, people do, unfortunately, um, have to take their certification exams more than once because they uh, either, one, they didn't study correctly or, you know, basically they didn't even understand how difficult the test is going to be. So I advise you to really study as much math as you possibly can before you uh, actually take this test. Now... One of the things that I do is I have a lot of test preparation courses to include an FTCE middle grades math five through nine uh, full uh, math course, full math prep course. It has a ton of information to help you prepare. So if you don't have a uh, study plan right now, check out my course. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description below. It will definitely help you get fully ready for this particular exam. OK, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. So here is an equation. We have negative 80 is equal to negative parentheses m plus 5 squared. The objective here is to solve for m. So if you think you could do this, go ahead and pause the video and work on this. If you uh, can successfully do this, it'll take you all of a couple minutes to do. And um, one of the things I want to emphasize here is to make sure that your answer is fully simplified. Okay, so let's go take a look at the actual solution. So if you did this correctly, m would be equal to negative 5 plus or minus 4 square root of 5. Okay, so that is the answer. Now, if you got this uh, correct, that is fantastic. So that indicates that, you know, you're pretty familiar with solving quadratic uh, equations. But this is only one tiny um, portion of the stuff that you're going to need to know for the FTCE 5 through 9 exam. Now, if you didn't get this uh, correct, well, you certainly want to uh, kind of use this as feedback that you need to study a lot more, okay? Because we are talking about quadratic equations here, which is, you know, you know, uh, a main topic. You know, solving equations, of course, is a huge part of algebra, and solving quadratic equations is something that you likely are going to be teaching if you're going to be teaching at this level. Okay, certainly probably at the ninth grade level, but let's go ahead and get into the actual solution right now. Okay, so how can we solve this particular equation? Well, before we even get started here, you want to recognize that this is a quadratic equation. In other words, uh, we're dealing with a degree two polynomial. Basically, what I'm trying to say is this. Anytime you recognize you're dealing with a quadratic equation, a few things need to come to mind. 
The first is that you're always going to have two solutions. Okay, always, always, always. You can have either, um, two real number solutions, two imaginary numbers uh, solutions, but you're going to have two uh, solutions. Okay, you can have real, imaginaries, all types of, uh, the type of roots you can have or combinations of them. But when it comes to degree two polynomials, i.e. quadratic equations, you're always going to have two. Okay, so in this case, our two solutions is negative five plus four uh, times the square root of five. And the second is negative five minus four times the square root of five. So these are our two unique solutions right here. Now, when you look at a quadratic equation or you recognize that you're dealing with one, you have to think about the different options that you have. Well, again, you know, this goes into your, your knowledge of algebra, but there are different methods that you can use. Sometimes you can take the square root of both sides. Actually, that's going to be the primary technique we're going to be using here. But sometimes you can't do this, all right? Uh, so therefore, you're going to look for other techniques like factoring. And sometimes you can factor, sometimes you cannot factor. And if you can't do any of these techniques, then you have to fall back on the quadratic formula. Okay, you can solve any quadratic equation using a quadratic formula. And kind of a long version of the quadratic formula is something called completing the square, right? So you do need to understand completing the squares, but it's really not um, a practical technique uh, to solve most quadratic uh, equations. You're going to need to know it, though. Uh, so the, kind of your main techniques is the quadratic formula, factoring and taking the square root of both sides. Now, before you just kind of uh, run to the quadratic formula, if you're like, ah, oh, I'm just going to use a quadratic formula, you want to see if you can actually uh, either factor or take the square root of both sides of an equation, because these are much easier uh, to much either much easier methods, excuse me, uh, to use than the quadratic formula. Okay, so in this particular case here, we have something squared. Now you can see we have m plus five squared, but we have something squared on this side of the equation. It's almost um, isolated, right? So in other words, we have a number, okay, which in this case it's negative 80, and then we have something squared, okay? So when we have a number and then something squared, some sort of variable expression here, the best way to handle this uh, scenario is to take the square root of both sides. But before we do this though, we want to address this negative sign right here. So we have negative 80 and this negative outside of this m plus uh, 5 squared. So let's go ahead and get rid of this negative uh, sign right now because you know, taking a square root of negative uh, numbers is not, you know, it's not something you want to do if you uh, can avoid it because you're going to be dealing with imaginary roots. So this is easy to fix up. All we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by negative 1. Remember, you, in algebra, you can do whatever you want to both sides of the equation as long as it's uh, the same thing. So here, I'm just going to simply divide both sides of the equation by negative 1, which is going to fix this up into this equation. Negative 80 divided by negative 1 is a positive 80. And then our negative signs here go away and we have m plus 5 squared. All right, so at this uh, stage here, we are set to take the square root of both sides. Now, of course, I got a lot of work going on right here. I'll explain that here in a second. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. We're going to have the square root of 80 is equal to the square root of m plus 5 squared. So the square root of something squared is just that something, all right? So if we have x squared, the square root of x squared is x, all right? So here, m plus 5 squared, the square root of that is simply going to be m plus 5. And that is going to be equal to the square root of 80, which I have written here as plus or minus 4 square root of 5. Now, if your answer, okay, if you uh, did this problem and you came up with this answer, negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 80, I would say that you were on the right track. However, I did state that you need to fully simplify your uh, answer. Okay, you're not going to want your students, your math students, to leave radicals and square roots like this. That's effectively like leaving a fraction as 100 over 300. In mathematics, we need to simplify, right? So uh, here, the square root of 80 is equal to, right? We can uh, find perfect squares in 80. Uh, so 80 is the same thing as 16 times 5, right? We want to factor these and look for the largest perfect square. So the square root of 80 is equal to the square root of 16 times 5. And then we could break up these respective uh, factors this way. 
the square root of 16 times the square root of 5 and the square root of 16 is equal to positive negative 4 times the square root of 5, all right? So that is what the square root of 80 is equal to. And now all we have to do is simply subtract 5 from both sides of the equation and we end up with our final answer. M is equal to negative 5 plus or minus 4 times the square root of 5. Okay, so this is just a, you know, little, you know, a part of what you're going to need to know to be successful on the FTCE middle grades math 5 through 9 exam. Okay, the whole point of this practice problem is to give you feedback, right? If you got this right and if you fully understand the concepts, well, that means that you probably, you know, uh, have some pretty good math skills going for you. But by no means do you want to, you know, be overconfident. You really want to, uh, you know, study everything. You want to overstudy, a matter of fact, uh, before you go into this exam. That's, you know, a far better approach to kind of, you know, have an attitude of saying, okay, here's how much I need to study. Here is the minimum amount I need to study in order to pass, right? So a lot of us, you know, because we're busy and we have a lot of other stuff going on, you might just say, look, I'm just going to study what is going to be, you know, necessary for me to pass this exam, the kind of the minimum amount. You might not be saying the minimum amount, but it's like, listen, you got other stuff going on. So you're going to be, okay, this will be good enough to pass. Guess what hap happens for 90% of the people who have that kind of approach? They miss passing the exam by a few points. All right. And that is not a good approach. So what you want to do is to be like, okay, whatever you think is necessary, go ahead and add in a whole bunch more. Okay, over prepare so you can take this exam one time and be uh, good to go with it. So again, if you need help with this, all right, uh, check out my test prep course. It is an outstanding uh, deal. It's a huge amount of information. Uh, matter of fact, most of you will not be able to even go through all of it, but there'll be areas that you need to work on, whether it be quadratic equations, geometry, trigonometry, whatever the case might be, I am here to try to help you out. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the FTCE, Middle Grades Math 5 through 9 exam. Thank you for your time and have a great day.